Uh, it's spelled two different ways, with an I and with an E. Uh, the meaning of Emmanuel is, well, we sang it, didn't we? God with us, revealed in us. He, he's, he's God with us, but he's revealed in us because Christ in us is the hope of glory. So he's not just with us, but I just believe that he permeates the cells in my body, that he's in me. Uh, and, and in him dwells the fullness of all we need. The fullness of the Godhead, by the way, that's a scripture course we could do. Nancy, remember that all when the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelleth in my Lord, and I am complete in him who's the head of all things. But it, it, God's with us. That's what it means in the, in the Hebrew. Hallelujah and the Greek as well. God is with us. And God with us is the I am. Jesus said, I am. And Jesus is the one that said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you until the end of the earth. And I love how the Amplified uh, Version of that scripture says, I'll never leave you, no, never, no, never, or forsake you, or leave you orphan. I will come to you. He's with us. Hallelujah. And he's the great I am. So the great I am is with us. There's nothing really is there that we could, that could be bigger in our situation than God can handle in us if we just will let him do it in us. If we'll let him be the great I am in our lives. Sometimes we can, we can block that, can't we? We can push him away. And we could say, no, I don't want to go out of Egypt. I want to stay here with the leeks and the garlic. <laughs> you know, but, but if we will just be the least bit cooperative with him, he will meet every need that we have. And, uh, but even when we don't let him, he still said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. It's just awesome. What a Savior we have. He uh, is in our midst. Jesus is, is because this this prophecy about his name shall be called Emmanuel was given of the Lord Jesus Christ. His name shall be called Emmanuel. So God with us is in the person of Jesus. Uh, as far as the Emmanuel passage, in Him all the fullness of the deity dwells in bodily form. I don't know if that scripture we're going to get to that tonight or not. It's pronounced Emmanuel. This, mean, this name indicates that Jesus is more than man. Of course, we know that. Some people don't know it, though. It's amazing how many people out there, they just think, well, they, they think, well, well, Jesus was God. Or they think Jesus was man. But Jesus was all God, and Jesus was all man. He was the divine and, the, and human coming together uh, when the, uh, the angel told Mary the, the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee and that which is born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Hallelujah. So he is everything. But what he did on the earth he did as man with God working through him. And so we know all that but it's just it's good to reiterate it because sometimes we forget that we're men or women but you know God can work in us too. And he said, John 14, 12, 12, 14, 12, I think it is. He said, the works that I do, shall you do also. And greater work shall you do than these, because I'm going to the Father and sending the Holy Ghost to you. So we've got that Emmanuel, the anointing of the, the one that, the greater one lives on the inside of us. And Isaiah said that the child that was born to us would be called Emmanuel. And that's in Isaiah 7, 14 and 9, 6. We'll look at that in a minute. He is the radiance of God's glory. I love this passage in Hebrews 1, 3. It says that Jesus is the exact representation of 
God. I just want to read that passage. Hebrews 1, 3. If somebody else finds it before me, uh, just, just let me know and I'll let you read it. Probably won't be hard for you to find it first because I'm, I'm trying to juggle this. Uh... You did? Come, would you come and read it for me, please? Have you got your amplifier? Looks like it's amplifier. Oh, right? Can you come read it into the microphone, please? Yes. Oh my, that's one long verse. Oh, yes, yes. Verse 3, Hebrews 1, 3. He well, let, let's get it in, the, in a regular version. What do you have, Ricky? Do I? You have to turn to it. Does anybody have it in the King James? Or, what is it? Thompson Chain. Oh, Thompson Chain. Yeah, let's read it in that. Would you mind reading it in that for me? Read it in this so we can get it on the. He being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged, up, purged out sin, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Awesome. Awesome. Read that in the amplifier. It's, it's longer. It amplifies, amplifies it, you know. He is the sole expression of the glory of God, or the light being, the outraying or radiance of the divine. And he is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding, maintaining, and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. When he had, by offering himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins and riddance of guilt, he sat down in the right hand of the divine majesty on high. Well, we could just teach all night on that. That's just powerful. Uh, this says Jesus is the exact, exact representation of the Father. When you see Jesus, you know what the Father's like. The Father is not different than Jesus. He is like Jesus. They, they have, so when you see the mercy of Jesus, that's what you know the Father is merciful. Hallelujah. Everything that Jesus is, the Father is. And everything He is, He is in me because He's Emmanuel. God is with us. He's in us. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and he will give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel. God with us. They didn't recognize that Jesus was God. And in his own hometown, they gave him a fit. They didn't respect him. They didn't respect the anointing. And he had trouble, if you read Mark chapter 5, healing people in his own hometown because... They, they just remembered him as being the son of a carpenter. So they didn't respect the anointing that was on him, and they weren't able to receive the blessing because they didn't recognize who he was. This is God with us. Hallelujah. And uh, thank the good Lord. He is with us. And sweep on into Judah. Twirling it over, passing through it, and reaching up to the neck, its outspread wings will cover the breadth of your land. O Emmanuel, Isaiah 8, 8. The virgin will eat with son and child and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. For unto us a child is born. We sang this tonight, didn't we? Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. I kind of mentioned this Sunday, the government is not on his shoulders right now. <laughs> but you know what? The, his government is on the shoulders of those who let him rule and reign through him. Yes. When, when we let Jesus rule and reign in us, the government of God comes through us, Amen. comes through me, comes through you. When we yield to him, his a ruling... We can take healing 
uh, to somebody who the devil is oppressed with, with sickness, or we can take a blessing to someone who the devil has cursed and reverse that curse. Because we're bringing, the, we're, when we touch somebody, we're touching in his name, he's touching through us, we're bringing his government to the earth. And that's our calling, to bring his dominion on the earth as it yeah. is in heaven. And that's the Lord's Prayer. And it, what a powerful prayer. And, and I often pray, sometimes many times a day, your kingdom come into this situation. Your will be done in this situation. Just call for that ruling. Call for the angels. Call for God's dominion to come into that situation. Uh, we don't always get it. We've got a big battle going on, don't we? The demonic forces. Uh, we're in the war zone. The, uh, uh, just like in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel fasted and prayed all those days, 21 days. Finally, that angel got to him with the answer. But he had been fasting and praying. The angel came the first day, but he said the the demonic forces, the prince of Persia withstood me low these 21 days. 21 days, the angelic beings were fighting just to get an answer. So some, don't give up if you don't get your answer right away. Sometimes there's a real battle going on. And we got to just stand and having done all the stand, stand, stand therefore. Amen. And the government will be upon his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Hallelujah. Whenever we need a question answered, Emmanuel is with us. And he knows how to give us the counsel. Sometimes if we'll just pray in the Spirit, we will actually interpret. We won't know we're interpreting it, but sometimes we will we'll just... Have you ever just prayed in the Spirit and when you prayed in the Spirit, you got your answer? And you didn't even realize, you know what you were doing, but you didn't know it? You were praying in the Spirit, and, and this Holy Spirit was interpreting that to you, the answer back to you. And uh, we need to let that wonderful counselor, see, Jesus is the wonderful counselor, and the Holy Spirit is the divine comforter counselor. And if we just yield to that, we're going to get the answer to whatever, whatever question you have, Emmanuel, God with us has an answer. The answer is not way off up here somewhere. We think it is. We think God's got that answer way up there somewhere. If you'll settle into your spirit man, your spirit man already knows the answer. Right in here. Because where does God live? Greater is he that is in me. In me. Does Jesus have the answer? Yes. Where is he? Off in heaven? Well, he said it at the right hand of the Father. But the Bible says that the Father and the Son have come and made their abode in us. So through the Holy Spirit, they're with us. So the answer's not off so far. Y'all listen to that still small voice. He's trying to tell you the answer to something. Listen to that inner, inner voice. The everlasting Father. He'll never stop being your father. When I think of everlasting father, I think, I think of the, the father in the prodigal son story. He was everlastingly, everlastingly the father of that prodigal. You're saying, are you preaching eternal security? I am preaching that the father never gives up on the son. That's what I'm preaching. That the father will never give up on you. He will everlastingly Believe in you and continue to believe in you. And he is the prince of peace. All these things are what Emmanuel is. And, and that, that peace of God that passes all understanding is ours as we let the wonderful counselor be the mighty God in us. Give us the counsel we need. Give us the love of the, of the Father. See, when you receive the love of the Father, it's a lot harder to fall away and mess up because you're holding, you're holding on to Father's arms. <laughs> you're holding on to Him. Amen? You're, you're just hugging the King of Kings, and He's going to you know, be right there for us. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. 
After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, which we already read that. You read that in that version, and then Nancy read it in the King, uh, or in the Amplified, and it says it's the, he's the exact, exact, exact. So when people tell you that God's mean, you say, well, was Jesus mean? No. Jesus is the exact representation of God. Hallelujah. Amen.